Chapter 3, 2012, The Return. Now, 2011 left a pretty good impression on me for Halloween Horror Nights. Um, I knew I wanted to go back. I knew I wanted to take some new people with me, and I knew I wanted to share this experience with others. So I went to Pops again. I was like, Pops, I want to go back to Halloween Horror Nights this year. I actually really had fun last year, and I, I want to go to again this year. And, and he was pretty shocked that I had a good time. I stayed the entire event. I, I went through as much mazes as I could. Uh, we didn't go through the thing in 2011. That was the only thing we never got to, and I'm kind of upset that I never got to go through that, even though that movie wasn't the greatest. That would have been the one and only time I got to see the thing at, at Halloween Horror Nights thus far. Um, so I, I told Pops, I'm like, hey, I want to go to Halloween Horror Nights this year. I want to check it out. Well, at the time, we were living with my grandpa, um, and my cousin lived there. A couple of my cousins lived there, and my cousin's girlfriend lived there at the time. Um, and we had a whole, a whole crew that we went with. Um, so we did, uh, me, my, my little cousin, George, um, my other cousin, and his girlfriend at the time, and my dad. The same cousin that was there in 2008 for Not Scary Farm that continues to, uh, or that continued to uh, obviously make fun of me for saying, you know, I'm feeling crazy and all that went with us. So that was kind of, you know, that didn't, you know, going into that year, he kind of was still making fun of me. Mind you, I was a freshman in 2012, uh, high school, just started high school. So uh, it was a new, a new year for me. Uh, we were in high school finally and everything, but he kept uh, obviously making fun of me leading up to halloween horror nights but it's all good now we're all good so we go to halloween horror nights we buy our tickets we go uh it's my cousin my little cousin's first time i don't know if my other cousin went and and his girlfriend's time went and i don't think my dad ever went i was the only one that went in 2011 and i was the only one that technically had the most experience of the event um out of all of us so my dad being my dad he dresses in like some like kind of dress shoes and He's wearing fucking, um, you know, he brought a jacket and everything, and we parked all the way down. Uh, there's a parking lot they have that's kind of only open when they really need extra space, and we had to walk all the way up this hill, and I remember it being fucking hot that day. I remember that hill being fucking a pain in the ass to walk up of, and yeah. However, I will say this. They gave us little miniature waters midway through, so that was kind of cool that they comped us for that but you know that's neither here nor there now the thing you got to know about 2012 is this started the era of the walking dead Walking Dead at the time was a very big show. They were going on their third season. Um, and Halloween Horror Nights adapted the first season into a maze and did a terror tram based off of it and had a scare zone based around it. Oh, no. They were still doing clowns at the, end, at the time. I don't think they did the scare zone yet. So The Walking Dead, a huge IP at the time, came to Halloween Horror Nights. It was massive. It was huge. There was The fans were just apeshit for it. Think about, uh, for my newer Halloween Horror Nights fans, think about how big and long of line Stranger Things was when it came to the event. That's about how long The Walking Dead was when it first came to the event. I know now when we look at The Walking Dead, we think, oh, Walking Dead attraction, that's nothing. However, I will, I will vouch for this. Every Walking Dead maze that they did at the event that was an actual built uh, for a seasonal thing and not a full year-round attraction... Those were actually really good because there was more details focused on the seasons that they were covering. And, you know, there's a lot of iconic moments in those. So that those were actually good. Um, so I remember the first maze we hit off the bat was Walking Dead. Facade was great. It was the hospital. You had the coroner's van. You had all these bodies laid out. It was an amazing time. And then you walk through essentially the greatest moments of the first season, which was Rick waking up in the hospital, the iconic don't open dead inside door with the zombies popping out. And you're walking through uh, little by little. Uh, trying to pr 
pretty much go through the entire first season of The Walking Dead in under five minutes. And they did a great job at that. They they um, really showed they had really good uh, makeup and masks for the uh, the walkers at the time, which was really cool to see that. Um, right after that, we did the Terror Tram, which immediately tied into The Walking Dead again. So we did that, and that was a lot of fun. That was um, another good maze to go, or another good Terror Tram. Uh, except this year, instead of going out the Bates Motel and up that hill, we actually extended and went up another hill and went up into like the forest area and wrapped all the way around and then came back down to where the Bates house is and where the World of Worlds cra uh, plane crash scene is. So seeing that, it, it was a lot of fun to, uh, to to try something new with the Terra Tram. It was my, my, everyone that I went with, it was their first time doing the Terra Tram, so that was a cool experience for them. And for me, to see them expand on that from the previous year was really cool. So going through that was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed that aspect of the Terra Tram, and I, and I wish one day they would, uh, they would bring it back. So that was a lot of fun. I, I do remember going back to, um, I do remember going back through La Llorona. La Llorona had returned that year. Um, that was a great year that, uh, that year uh, as far as um, what they had in store. They had a lot of good ones and, and, and whatnot. Um, I remember at one point, too, we got split off from my cousin and his girlfriend. They went on to do their own thing, and me, my cousin, and my dad stayed together. Uh, so we did La Llorona, which was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a return maze, and it was essentially the same thing, but they had never seen it, and they thought it was really good, and it was cool to see it again. So that would have been my second time seeing La Llorona back at the, at the event. Um, from there, I do remember checking out Universal Monsters Remix. Um, now, this was Universal Monsters... This was actually kind of the first time they got a whole... House of Horrors was there year-round, so they just turned it into Universal Monsters Remix, which they had a, essentially a DJ set and whatnot. It wasn't figured yet, sadly. But uh, essentially they had this, this DJ set, uh, and it was just kind of like a vibe going on. And I remember me and my cousin just really liking that and, and really just vibing with it. And, and the House of Horrors was always one of my favorites to go through, so... That was cool to go through that, especially this year being a different theme. Last year was the Wolfman. This year in Pacific for 2012 was Universal Monsters Remix. So they pretty much brought all the iconic Universal Monsters. They took the House of Horrors, essentially, and just gave it a DJ vibe, put some dubstep in there, and it worked out as a vibe. A lot of fun, and I remember just going through there enjoying it. Alice Cooper Goes to Hell was the last maze that I got to go that night. So that means I missed out on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Welcome to Silent Hill, which was the one and only time that I remember Silent Hill ever being there. We haven't had a Silent Hill maze since because they have not made movies or anything. So that was a lot of fun to go through, though. Alice Cooper Goes to Hell. That was the, uh, the second year Alice Cooper was at uh, Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, the first year was Welcome to Hell, and that maze was uh, fantastic. It was a great time. Um, it was a good vibe. If you if you remember Welcome to Hell, it was like this kind of like realtor house that kind of looked like something you'd see in like maybe Hawaii or something. Uh, and it went through some of the iconic greatest hits of Alice Cooper. And for Go to Hell, they did the exact same thing, except it was a different concept in Maze, and it was just more of the greatest hits of Alice Cooper. Um, and this one was based more around, I think, the Seven Deadly Sins or the, or the, the different stages of Hell. Um so you got to go through like kind of the different stages of hell and whatnot and see like a lot of all the seven deadly sins and whatnot. And that was really cool to walk through that. It was another 3D maze because um, we were still on the 3D vibe. And to go through that and see the iconic designs and, and, and watch some of his iconic songs come to life was really cool. Music mazes for me, especially if they're metal at Halloween Horror Nights, has, have always been amazing. Um, and 2012 and 2011 really set the tone for me for music mazes. And I really enjoyed them. I really like the concept of taking some of these iconic songs and, and making them into a live-action horror movie that you're actually walking through. So that was really cool. Uh, I remember being really impressed with that maze. Really cool. I remember the one thing that scared me the most in that maze was the giant snake they had at the end, the snake animatronic. I also have a funny story in that maze. I was still, you know, in the scared phase. So I remember walking through the lust section, and they had uh, go-go dancers at the time dancing. They don't really do that too often anymore now, but they had go-go dancers dancing inside the maze, and they had a bunch of guys, like, kind of sitting around the go-go, like, watching the go-go dancers. Like, that was the the character. They were supposed to be, like, in a, essentially in a strip club. Um, and 
I remember one of the guys was just kind of sitting there and I thought he was a mannequin and the girl had me distracted because she was like talking to me or something and the guy popped out at me. Now, this is how you know it was way back then and I'm not even mad and not even like I thought it was hilarious and I and I wish a lot of haunts would could push these boundaries, but it, it, you know, times have changed and stuff. So I remember the, the go-go dancer looking right at me and goes, ah, you're a little bitch. And I was like, Thinking back at that now, it's like I kind of miss that. Like I miss when they would talk shit to you. Like that's – for me, that's what makes a horror event is, is the interaction and, and them kind of bagging on you for being scared. And I think that's really fun. Um, and I remember I, I that was, you know, fuck what I said in Not Scary Farm at 2008 with my family. That was the next that, – that was the next thing I was getting bagged on for the next couple of years is being called a bitch for getting scared inside of a maze. Um so that was a funny moment for me. I honestly thought it was hilarious, and uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Some of the scare zones we had were uh, Silent Hill was in the lower lot. That was when they used to do lower lot um, scare zones because the maze was actually in the mummy queue. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre was in the JP queue at the time. It was Jurassic Park. Um, we had Toys, which was on Baker Street, which is on French Street, and Clowns at the front gates. Clowns was there for a while. Clowns was, uh, for me, that's what made the iconic Flame Towers stand out was when they had the clowns maze and they would continue to keep using those but it was uh definitely something and that's the one and only time and in, in year that i got to see bill and ted's excellent halloween adventure which was a parody style show much like the hanging but themed to bill and ted and it referenced pop culture and whatnot and it was a fun time 2012 had a, a very uh big step for me going forward to Halloween Horror Nights. I knew this is something I wanted to do every single year after going in 2011. And then after going in 2012, this was definitely something I wanted to do every single year. And we were just getting started because in 2013, definitely, definitely had a great time in 2013. But in 2013, that was when we officially hit the fanboy stage of Halloween Horror Nights and Haunt. But... Like I always say, that's a story for another time. I'll see you guys right here next Monday for another episode of Nights of Horror Origins. But until then, stay spooky. Yeah.